Hello and welcome to the Football Parliament podcast, one-stop destination for all your football discussions, debates and opinions. And today I have with me Tanish Tewari, a fellow Chelsea fan. And today we will be living the journey, Chelsea's dramatic journey, I would say, in the in this year's UEFA Champions League. So, hello Tanish. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hi, Chirag. I mean, reliving this entire Champions League campaign is somewhat of a dream because it's yes, it's been long, but it has been it has been fairly decent, and we have been fairly consistent in the Champions League campaign. To be very uh, very honest, uh, it's surprising because the only game that we lost uh, and rather unconvincingly was Porto, uh, Porto in the second leg. Uh, Apart from that, we have been very good, to be very honest, in the Champions League. What about you? The a club legend as a as our club manager, we all hoped that we will reach the Champions League final. But that was all hopes. If you would have said me in the starting of the season that we are going for a Champions League final, I would not not have believed you. Although we spent two thirty million or so this window, but no one was ready to uh, witness the Champions League final. And rather, after the group stages as well. If I would have said you that uh, uh, Tanish, we are going to the Champions League final this year, you would not have believed it. It was Tuchel who took up the charge. He uh, changed everything. And see, if we are talking about Chelsea's uh, UCL journey, we have to talk about what everyone is talking about. That is the similarity with 2012. That year as well, we had a managerial change in between. We had so many common links that I read every day on Twitter that Chelsea, uh, it is written in stars for Chelsea this year. But are we going to do it or not? That will definitely depend on what the uh, outcome is on Saturday. But starting with the very first moment, uh, see, whenever the groups were announced, obviously we were not in the group A, uh, pot A, we were uh, placed in pot B because we were not the champions of England, neither did we win the Europa League final. So we were drawn against Sevilla, Krasnodar and Ren. According to me, it was a very fairly easy group for us. We should have topped the group. Obviously, we had a, a competition with Sevilla. And that is what we witnessed in the very first uh, week. We had a match, uh, one-all draw with Sevilla. So, do you have any memories of the first uh, first match, Champions League uh, match, Frank Lampard managing it? Yeah, I remember that game very well. Uh, it was a really, really difficult game. I mean, Sevilla did not have any clear chances. We created a chance, we scored a goal, they created a chance, they scored a goal, but that is it. And it was a fairly boring game, to be very honest. Uh, it was sort of, we evened out each other, maybe you can say. Uh, and under Lampard, our defence start, had started to look better than what it was last season. And our attack was still very much trying to find its feet. So, uh, for the first match day, I think we really put up a fight. We... I wouldn't say we deserve to win, to be very honest, that first game. But apart from that, I think that it was a good result considering the way Sevilla controlled the possession, the way Sevilla passed the ball around. It was a very difficult game for Chelsea. And at the end of the day, thankfully, we got through that game. See, uh, according to me, that was the phase when we were getting a lot of draws. Uh, we got a 0-0 draw against Manchester United, if I'm not wrong. We were trying to not concede and not even score. Lampard was trying to just uh, get a point from big matches and not uh, lose a point rather. True. Then we moved to one of our big games that saw that Chelsea is coming up, is reliving. We saw our uh, new attack uh, signings showing up and that was the game against Krasnodar, a 4-0 uh, victory. So how do you remember that game? Yeah, I remember that game. I remember each game extremely well because of how memorable this campaign has been. Uh, I think the Krasnodar game, the scoreline is misleading. The 4-0 scoreline was very, very misleading. Uh, Krasnodar put up a good fight, but uh, I think the goalkeeper made a mistake, which completely swung the momentum in our favour. Uh, apart from that, I think in the later stages, we scored four goals. So, it's n we did not dominate the game, let's be very honest. Uh, and it wasn't as the scoreline suggested. Krasnodar did put up a fight, but... Simply because of the difference in quality, maybe we got through. And uh, I think we deserve to get through because 4-0 is... You, it, cannot, it can never be a flat, uh, flattering scoreline. At the end of the day, it was away, away from home. We got the job done in front of Roman Abramovich. So, yeah, simple. 
see uh, i remember that game it was that game right mason mount uh, put a ball through callum hudson odoi that so was that, the end game that was the start oh, that was the end game but krasnodar was uh, for me the game when zeek and timo werner were stepping up both of yes. them uh, uh, were on the score sheet and we were like getting into the groove in the champions league now next was the uh, 3-0 victory against ren how do you see that game now like not talking about a, a lot about the ren games because both of them were simultaneous games third and fourth it was a fe- uh, easy competition for us we were not obliged to uh, go all out because we already had a draw against sevilla and we were leading in the group it was about to uh, be- uh, to take the top spot in the group those games were very comfortable according to me and according to me the uh, game changer was the sevilla match that happened in the fifth game week we saw uh, we are talking about aguero's class the legend is leaving no one is talking about giroud leaving giroud is a premier league legend he will be leaving premier league this season that is a speculation as of now but definitely four goals in a champions league match day against a spanish giant how do you see him uh, his game that day yeah uh, that that game was a very very pleasant surprise to be very honest but because before that game i wasn't so so confident Uh, as it was away from home it was at ramon sanchez pichuan sevilla's uh, home stadium uh, and we did not do well against them in the first uh, uh, in the match at stamford bridge so i was fairly concerned and even looking at the sides sevilla had not rotated a lot but on the other hand chelsea had practically fielded a diff- entirely different level to what was fielded in uh, at stamford bridge uh, i was fairly worried but when when we started the game every minute the confidence just went up and giroud was just on a different level that day i mean kai havertz too played well he provided i think two assists if i'm not wrong uh, yes we started to see that attacking flair that lampard was trying to get out of uh, out of the team uh, and even the defense was rock solid to that day we did not let sevilla through at all uh, i think that was our best performance to be very honest uh, in the champions league campaign and i look back at that night with a lot of joy to be very honest uh, and if you are talking about giroud we cannot forget the last minute winner against uh, the rennes score correct See, the fourth game week we were struggling we cannot deny that the thing was if we uh, win that game we were qualified for the champions league it was uh, not at all a point even to uh, go and struggle in the champions league when you have a lot of good premier league games to play but the last minute i remember it was timo werner who shot the uh short but it was a good save that came out of nowhere from their keeper as well. but no defender either the french defenders i mean the ren defenders or chelsea attackers as well were going for the ball there was only one man who knew that he can score from outside the box a header looping into the goal and that was olivier giroud he helped us secure the group stages uh, the uh, spot in the playoffs and also he helped us get from the group stage according to me he was one of our best players in the group stage so any player of the uh, group according to you best player for chelsea in the group stages yeah, for me it is the group stages definitely olivier giroud i think uh, he scored six goals no f- uh, five goals if five. i'm not wrong five goals in six games that's that's a beautiful tally and considering the fact that he did not even play all the fi- all the six games uh, and did not even start that exactly, is the main point exactly. he started the sevilla game but not all of those exactly and that stad rene header in the 93rd minute that that goes very very unnoticed because the ball was looping and it had no pace on it it had no uh, sort of speed and giru had to do a lot of work to actually get up to direct the ball into the corner into the top corner away from the defender who was marking uh, then he had to generate somehow the power required to actually put the goal uh, put the ball into the net and that was just a beautiful beautiful piece of technique which was very well executed by giru so my man of the group stages was definitely olivier giru for chelsea definitely then uh, we moved to the atletico game and i don't think we can stop praising giru here as well it was an away fixture for us and how can you bring a bicycle kick out of nowhere Chelsea and Atletico both were looking so defensively solid that no one wanted to score. Atletico was happy to go with a 0-0 score line when you are going uh, away into the next leg. But Chelsea wanted a goal desperately and how did it come? First of all they took a shot deflected uh, Mason Mount and the defender had a collision or something and it came off the defender Giroud was in the offside position standing and it went in. And what was that technique for a 36 or 34 year old man 
going for a bicycle kick against the best spanish team how do you remember that goal goal of the season for you uh yeah definitely goal of the season for me uh i think when it comes to jiru he's a master of scoring beautiful goals even at arsenal he scored that wonderful scorpion kick and i mean i i don't know how he's not won a pichichi since like it's really it's really uh, mind boggling that he hasn't won a single goal of the season award and uh, this goal against uh, atletico okay. madrid it was just before marcus alonso put the cross in i was thinking to myself that this is going to be decided by a moment of individual brilliance and that brilliance was provided by the man who in my opinion is chelsea's best striker uh, and that was just a sublime sublime free kick a uh, sublime uh, bicycle kick even yano black one of the best keepers in the world even he could not get near it because it was just so perfectly placed in the corner that it was just a beautiful goal to be very honest and it was a very difficult game against atletico because we just could not break the defense and it was like it was like back seven at times and given our creativity and goal scoring problems i was pleasantly surprised that we got away with it and like you know came we came back from sevilla with a 1-0 score like see uh, this was also the first game thomas tuchel took in charge in the champions league thomas tuchel was not at all expected to go all out in the champions league because uh this season because obviously when you have a managerial change you have a golden period for a month or so but you do not have a so good of a season that you can you change everything for chelsea chelsea were going so down dipping so down and tuchel changed everything next game was according to me rather the most important game for chelsea this season because first of all we drew the most difficult opponent we could in form of atletico madrid everyone else got their better opponent when uh, if they finished uh, top of the group we got one of the most difficult groups then the away leg you did not have mason mount you did not have thiago silva and we did oh, not have jorginho uh that game was like the tuchel game the way tuchel wants to play us the perfect game according to me i'll summarize do you remember that game first of all a great timo werner assist for zx zx puts in pass timo werner running all through and through then out of nowhere emerson is our new left winger Pulisic plays the ball to Emerson. Emerson scores in the 90th minute, and we see celebrations by Mason Mount, Thiago Silva, and Jorginho like they have won everything they even aspire, ever aspired. Yeah, uh, I remember that game very well. Also, like surprise, surprise. Uh, it was very clear what Thomas Tuchel was going to do because he's a smart manager. Yes, he has his own identity in how he wants his team to play. His general style of play is possession-based play, but. he knew that atletico had to go all out and he knew that they ha- they will come for us and which they did for the entire 90 minutes yes they couldn't break us down because that is why, that is because our defense was so solid and we just looked to play on the counter that and that was very evident from the start we the, the reason why he deployed kai havertz uh, team owner and uh, our team zia call in one game was simply because of the pace and the technique they have going forward and surprisingly it worked and th- that is how good thomas tuchel has been the 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 key decision to put havertz in the mason mount role and to put that pairing of ziek and timo werner which has been successful at times i think that was a big decision that uh, thomas tuchel got right and 2-0 was a very very beautiful score line because simply in the manner in which we did it we I actually like to phrase that leg as Chelsea Atletico'd Atletico. It was so frustrating for Atletico because we were defending very well. We were sticking in every single tackle. We were frustrating their attacking players again and again. I think they had just one shot on target, and that was Jao Felix in the 83rd minute. So. i can understand from an atletico madrid's point of view that we were just all over them and i remember antonio rudiger's performance in that game was absolutely top notch rudiger versus suarez was a battle to yeah, win exactly exactly that was that battle of the knockout stages the iconic statement according to me this will go for long if chelsea wins this title that statement that he defends his badge i will defend my badge and we both will do whatever we want for the team that statement will go as iconic statement going to be if chelsea wins the title tomorrow so hopefully 
hopefully we do but uh, apart from that uh, about that performance i think we were excellent on the night and we deserved the tunnel win and we were just very good in general in the round knockout stages next we move to the see if we got the most difficult draw in atletico we were favored with the easiest i would say in draw in porto if we consider your memories from the porto uh, two legs yeah uh, i remember the first leg and the second leg uh, very well uh, for chirag are you there uh yeah so talking about the uh, porto first leg i think it was both of the legs were played in seven uh, and uh, first leg for us was the away leg it was pivotal to get an away goal and uh, i think mason when mason it was very very kg until the moment mason mount scored that was a piece of brilliance by mason mount that turn to actually fool uh, the center back of porto and that finish exquisite finish into the bottom corner i think that is something that we have not seen a lot from our attackers this season but it came at the right time thankfully and uh, it just provided a morale boost because we had the away goal and we just had to defend well and probably get the second goal and it came in the form of ben chilwell who hopped onto a mistake and uh, Short composure in the final third took it past the keeper. And become and became Fernando Torres. That was a very, that was a very, there. very good performance. And Ben Chilwell became Fernando Torres out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Fernando Torres was from Barcelona. <laughs> exactly, extremely similar vibes and extremely similar goals. Uh, I think the second leg was probably the toughest games that I have seen Chelsea play uh, in quite a while because Porto was just relentless. I I I don't understand the criticism that Porto have received by the English media. They were saying that uh, they did not show intent, they did not show any attacking flair, and I'm just sat there thinking, how can that be? Chelsea defended well, yes, that's a fact, but but Porto just kept coming at us constantly, con- just It's throughout the ninety minutes. It was well. a relentless barrage, and our attackers just could not, for the life of them, uh, get string a single attack together because. they too were defensively brilliant and they got a deserving goal and they won the leg i think deservedly so with that beautiful teremi goal uh, the goal of the goal. tournament for, of the of the tournament for any team definitely yeah, yeah. i think that that will be the goal of the tournament to be very honest over yeah. olivier giroud's bicycle kick but uh, yeah also. yeah thankfully our defense held up thankfully our defense held up in the second leg and uh, you know we scraped through but yeah we did it eventually uh, so next was the ga- tie of the tournament for us according to me it was the game against 13 time champions real madrid with their pri- players who have won three titles consecutively with their manager who has won three titles consecutively with the best of their players and what did he do tuchel's impact by that time was so much that all the managers were forced to play uh, how tuchel wanted them to no one would ever imagine a successful uh, real madrid team the world's best dominating real madrid team would change their setup to play against uh, to play against chelsea and they went for a back three when the, uh, you'd uh, read the real madrid team or saw the uh, see the first time you saw the real madrid team what was your reaction i, I was honestly very surprised because on the channel they actually showed a 433 and i was like okay like a big deal like the, that is the system that they always play with but in the game it was completely different and that is exactly what happened in the second leg i think zidane overcomplicated it overthought it tried to match up tuchel side and it's no it's no secret that we play the three at the back system much better than real madrid yes they played on a somewhat regular basis but not as regular as uh, a chelsea does but uh, the space that we had in midfield simply because of one man in golo conte he manhandled the three real madrid midfielders casemiro modric cruz they were just all over the place and marcelo as well zidane put in marcelo as an inverted player who can play in center to compensate in golo conte what is even go- what was even going he was manhandling them like they were nothing against him we saw prime angolo conte uh, in the two legs according to me yeah uh, yeah spot on i think yes angolo conte was player of the i think 
semi finals to be very honest but uh, even apart from uh, angolo conte i think the team played very well we were undone by that beautiful benzema volley like he chested it and he just slashed and the beautiful timo werner miss how yeah, can you that put it that misses we could have won that game 4-1 easily easily on the night in the night. first leg yes in the It's first leg the tie would have been done yeah the tie would have been over and that 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 is what the major concern was was coming to the second leg that we have missed our chances in the first leg how could have we done this and it's going to be extremely difficult for us now because madrid will throw everything at us and it that did not happen we won the second leg as well we we won the second leg uh, and deservedly so to be very honest we were exceptional both leg, the legs if you were saying we we could have won the first leg 4-1 then according to me the second leg could have won 6-0 the way we were performing at least we scored two and i remember clear misses by uh, havertz by mount like that game could have been ended so earlier i do not even remember but to be honest that was the gooseber moment from the whole season according to me when pulisic played the ball to mason mount and mason mount just put that ball into the net that was the gooseber moment according to me yeah yeah ngolo kante was the carrier uh, of that team he played uh, he played the pre assist in both the goals if i am not wrong and that was the moment for but the moment was for mason mount it was for pulisic it was for the whole team the celebrations of those youngsters show what they did achieve i was uh, looking around the one footballs the many other uh, people who do this stuff predicting the whole champions league during the group stages no one ever predicted chelsea to even go past the uh, last eight the last four but chelsea now are in the champions league final i'll not take much of the time but just uh, what do you expect uh, how do you want to see uh, the champions league final are we getting the second star in the decade second star on our jersey to be honest i feel that we will have luck on our side and uh, i don't know why but we have another level of confidence when we play city now you can go and say and discredit chelsea as much as you want and say that they played the second team the best players were not playing etc 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 i don't care about that yes they have moments of individual brilliance on a consistent basis but when it comes to tactics i think in both the games we outshone them we outclassed them we could have won the game by a more convincing margin if it wasn't for attack that is the one thing that i'm scared about our attack i know we will not dominate the ball but we will get chance to chances on the counter but if our attack does not take our chances i don't think we will win the champions league but there's always that element of risk going into a champions league final there's always that element of fear but apart from that i think i'm fairly confident against city if say it was a psg i would be extremely concerned because they like to sit back and counter and i am comfortable with chelsea playing off the ball than i am with on them because that is what yeah. happened in the fa cup final as well we dominated the ball we did nothing with it uh, so i think i'll give us a better chance against city and i think we'll win the champions league final uh see if everything is lining up according to 2012 this game is going into penalties do you have the nerves to see the penalties this time Yeah, or are you switching off the TV and waiting for the next morning to know who won? No, 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 what? No, <laughs> I would never do that. To be very honest, I couldn't even watch the uh, Manchester United and Villarreal penalties because they were just, they were just not missing any penalties. I think only David Villarreal missed. I didn't see missed. that match. I was a neutral fan and I was getting worried for both the teams. <laughs> exactly. Why? I was getting like worried. Another level. I was getting worried they... as well because. you always have that in your back of the mind like what what if same thing happens to uh, chelsea and what if edward mendy goes and misses uh, his uh, last penalty and it, it's just uh, it's just a congregation of emotions and you know But i don't want to, to go to penalty mendy is not taking the last penalty what what tanish we should uh, address to the whole uh, podcast now that we both want kepa to take the last penalty it can be no one rather than kepa who should start we both are kepa fans <laughs> yeah i i hope i hope that uh, somehow kepa comes on the field and uh, scores the winning penalty like no but no not just the winning penalty rather save one penalty because uh, according oh, to me uh, kepa is a better penalty saver than edward yes, mendy yes, yes. unless aguero is taking it if aguero is taking it i'd put 
even uh, as pilik the shortest man to hold on the to that penalty no i think we are focusing on penalties a bit too much i think the the game i'm going to make a bold prediction i don't know who wins exactly but i can say that the game will end in 90 minutes it won't go to extra time it won't go to penalties the game will be decided in 90 minutes i'm fairly confident against uh, with our chances against city and let's see what happens hopefully we win uh, with those great predictions see i will not put in my predictions until tomorrow where, uh, where we are getting you the full preview with the city fans a neutral fan and definitely the big, uh, the biggest preview we have ever done and see reliving this video i would like to end this video by just, by just saying reliving the every moment still gives me goosebumps how we came from one manager to the other the transition from group stages to the knockouts and we are in the champions league final if you like uh, guys like the video enjoyed the whole journey do like comment and share and do let us know what was your best moment from the season that's it thank you guys thank you guys